What's up? This is Casey from Casey's Custom. In this video, I'm going to build this awesome 1951 Chevy for under $3,500. We do a modern chassis swap. We also do a turbocharger and airbags. This was actually a weekly build series here on YouTube. I have 35 other videos that will go into a lot more detail than this video will. This video I wanted to put together where start to finish, you could sit down, watch when I first got the car for 600 bucks, when I first got the S10 that we chassis swap, all the way to getting it done, driving it, playing with the airbags, playing with the turbo, and everything in between. So with all that said, let's get started. <laughs> I really want to dig into this 51 Chevy, but I don't really want to go crazy on it until I figure out what the donor car is going to be. Then I can start cutting up the donor car and put it on top. I've been looking for like a Blazer S10 truck, something like that. I'm having a hard time finding them. Um, they're just, they're hard to find lately, except for that one I just bought today. It was actually kind of easy to find. Picked it up, 99 GMC, really nice, really solid, zero rust. These two are going to make sweet love and uh, they're going to make a cool ass baby. So. Let's start cutting some shit up, baby. 1999 GMC Jimmy, which is basically just a Chevy Blazer, but it's nicer trim, essentially. This is gonna be our donor chassis for the 51 Chevy. Plans are, we finally got it figured out, we're doing a $3,500 budget. I went through all the comments, three to $5,000 budget was commented like over 100 times, so I think that's gonna be perfect. We're gonna do $3,500. The plans for it, full chassis swap, we're going to do bags, and we're going to keep, I'm actually going to run this motor unless I have issues with it. It's got a 4.3 V6, it's the same motor I have in my truck, they got like 250 horsepower, they're actually really good little motors. It's essentially a 350 Chevy with two cylinders cut off the back. So, we're going to keep this motor in trans, we're going to use all this. We're gonna bag it, I want it to be laying on the ground. I think we're gonna probably go ahead and chop the 51 as well. I don't know, I might change my mind on that, but that's gonna be the plans and that's what we're gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do, I picked this up for 500 bucks. Since this is a budget build, I'm gonna take pictures of all the parts and try and get them on Facebook Marketplace. It's a lot easier to sell the stuff when people can look at it on a car versus just laying in a pile. So obviously I don't need any of these body panels. We're gonna take a bunch of pictures. Try and sell the hatch, doors, hood, fenders, everything. I don't need any of that. And in reality, I probably don't need the rear seat. It's actually pretty good too. I'll give you a little walk through. Front seat's a little crappy, but really nice. I think it was 160,000 mile, pretty good. He's having a little bit of electrical issues, but I'm pretty sure I know what that is because these four threes, whoa, these four threes have issues with the distributor cap. And I don't think he's changed that yet. So I think that's what it is. He has put a bunch of money in this too. I think he said he spent over a thousand dollars in parts trying to fix stuff. And uh, he never fixed the one thing that I thought was the issue. So I might be able to go through it. It basically runs and drives occasionally, but sometimes he'll turn the key on and he has nothing. So um, it's obviously some sort of an electrical issue. We're gonna go through that a little bit before I dig into it. I don't wanna start cutting wires and then have to chase wires. So I, I kinda am probably gonna work on it, get it running, and then we'll start cutting some of this stuff off. Now I know some people will see this and they'll say, it can't be a V6 all wheel drive. You can't have a hot rod like that. It just doesn't work. It's supposed to be a V8 rear wheel drive. That's how hot rodding works. You know, you, you, can't, you can't break these rules. You can. One, most people don't give a shit. Two, I have ran this V6 all-wheel drive Blazer for three years. I've been daily driving this truck. Zero issues. Love it. I had a brake caliper go out on it on a Friday at like 5 o'clock. I had it fixed Friday at 5.30. The part was $12 at O'Reilly's. They had it in stock. Threw it on, kept on the road, went to a show. That's what hot riding is about. We're going we're gonna to tackle that along the way because i obviously still have to cut all this off and put a body on it before i start worrying about airbags let's figure out why she's not running right first got a lot of corrosion in there that's probably my issue and i got a rusty rotor these aren't great i could sand both of these down and reuse them but these are usually like 15 20 bucks a piece so i'm just gonna go grab new ones and uh We'll throw them on and hopefully that's our issue. I mean, that corrosion is really bad on these. I bet that's why we didn't have great spark. Mm -hmm. 
It's great that I'm a, such a small, skinny fella, because getting my hands back here is super easy. I tell you what, if I was, oh, I don't know, 6'2", 250, this would be a pain in the ass, but luckily I'm a little bitty guy. Okay, I think I actually got it. Let's see what happens. Ooh, let's scoot you back here. I'm gonna hit the button and hopefully we get lucky. We got gas, we got charging, we got oil. Let's see what happens. I have not drove this yet, obviously. Oh, brakes are good. Brakes are real good. Why is the seat up so high? Oh, yeah. We don't want to go too far because it is the middle of the night. And uh, if I break down, I don't really, don't really want to have to get somebody to try and tow me at midnight. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, she got some shit to her, bud. Awesome. This is going to work perfect for our donor chassis, man. I wonder why the ABS light is on. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Shifting good. Turning good. This is this is going to work out great. I'm so happy. I'm going to probably wait another day or so. And then we're going to start stripping some of these parts. So what is funny is I got the roof cut off. I got the front end cut off. All that just looks huge and awesome. And oh, you did so much work in reality. That's pretty easy. That only takes a couple hours. When you start whittling down shit to get it, you know, where a, a body co can go on top of it, it really takes a long time. As you can see, there's three pieces in here. These two are welded together down inside there. So you literally have to cut this off in pieces. You can't just run a saws all through it because it'll bind up too much. So you, you gotta take you gotta take the whole quarter panel off in one sheet, then you gotta take that off in another sheet, and then you gotta go in there with a like an air chisel and kind of chisel some of this shit off because you can't really get to it. It's a pain in the ass. In some bodies, I don't think this one, but in some bodies, because the S10s are so narrow, some guys will actually just have the whole rocker there and then they'll be able to weld the rocker to the older body rocker. Meter and shit. Uh, but anyways, I said all that basically because I wanted to take a break and be lazy, but now we gotta start cutting this shit out. Back to time lapse. She's all cut. Pretty good. Like I said, need to take some measurements and see if I need to cut in more or not. But for now, I'm gonna go through and check all the connections that got cut. I cut some of the stuff off that went to the roof. I obviously didn't need it. Cut the stuff off to the doors, obviously didn't need that. But before I hook the battery back up, I need to go through here and cap all these off because when you cut them like that, they can run into each other and then you'll just start popping fuses left and right. So we're gonna go through all these wires. Hopefully they're all good. We don't have any issues and uh, we'll fire it up and take it around the block. And okay, so I got all the wires capped. I got all the windshield glass cut out. I got all the any extra glass anywhere I got vacuumed out because I don't like that rattling around the engine when you start it. Throwing the battery in right now and we will turn the key and see what happens. Hopefully I don't have any, you know, loose ends anywhere. Definitely need to zip tie <laughs> some hanging shit and uh, we'll take it for a spin in the alley.
okay, baby? Oh, fuck. Oh, okay, it was just the tripod. <laughs> Oops. Just, just squint your eyes real good and then you can kind of see it. <laughs> you can kind of see the vision. Motherfucker's way too tall. We're gonna have to fix that for sure. The Chevy is now in the shop. So we can, cart we can start cutting this one down. I need to obviously strip all that. I don't need any of that. I just need the body. This will actually, this is actually a little bit harder than cutting the body off of the blazer because you know, you can just come in here and whack the post off and pull it, but that's not how we can do this one. I actually gotta get in here. I gotta get the seat out. I gotta crawl in there, cut all that out, pull it out. Hey, it's a bitch. So we got the blazer out in the other garage. I got the 51 Chevy in. I'm gonna start stripping it. I was gonna start cutting the floor out and all that fun stuff, but I think I'm gonna take the front clip off first. I'm gonna cut these bumpers off. These bumpers are worth a lot of money and I'm gonna run them for now, but if I get in a pinch with money and I need to sell them, apparently these side bumperettes, those are rare and it was like a dealer option only. I've seen these on eBay for like a grand, 800 bucks. I mean, in that condition too. And I also have another set in the rear. So I'm gonna pop that off for now and just kind of keep that in my back pocket if I need to get fill up with some more money later on. We're doing this project for 3,500 bucks, which, I just built one for a thousand, so a lot of people think, well, this is going to be easy. We are going to airbag this one, and you can have, I mean, you can put 10 grand in an airbag kit easily. So it's going to be just as challenging as the thousand dollar budget. But let's get to stripping, baby. Got most of the front clip off. Still got a little bit of stuff to do, but it is currently two in the morning on a Monday. So I need to get my ass to bed because I got to get up and do all this shit again. Just in case you're new to the channel, um, I only work on, I actually own a hot rod shop. I build customer cars for a living. I only work on my own stuff at night after I clock out. So, I mean, that's, that's worth a subscribe right there, right? The fact that I'm doing 2 a.m. YouTube builds just so you guys can watch for free. You gotta, you gotta subscribe on that. I'll lube all these bad boys up. But they almost never come undone. I mean, it's very rare. But we'll give them a fighting chance at least. Extremely annoying shift later. There is a foot of dirt in the bottom. I'm not even close to being done and look at the pile of shit. Ugh. There is literally a foot of dirt in there. Gross, I got that thing's completely full. That's trash can number three, maybe trash can number four. To be completely honest with you, let me check. Trash can number four, and it's still full of shit. There's bugs everywhere, and many animals have been living in there. I'm tired of them crawling around me while I'm trying to get it cut. So. Pulled it back outside. I'm gonna clean this thing real good. Hose it off. I got all of the front clip off. Bumper, everything's off of there. Um, now I basically need to start cutting the floor. And I'm crawling in there doing stuff. And it's just still so disgusting. And there's just dirt everywhere and it smells really bad. So we're gonna hose this thing off for a little bit. Finally, got her all cleaned out. So much shit underneath it, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna push it back in, let this bitch dry for a day, and then we'll start over. Okay, got everything completely cleaned out. No more uh, spiders crawling all over me. Look how bad this is. Definitely not great. The funny thing is, there was like a foot of soil. I've probably said that 20 times by now. The foot of dirt and shit was on this side, but that side rotted out, so that's kind of silly. I would've thought that would've been the other way around, but as you can see, this, this floor is about gone. It's so bad, I'm not even gonna bother cutting it out first. Normally I would do the floor first, but I think what I'm gonna do, since that's almost all gone, I'm actually gonna come in here and cut the cowl, because we're gonna cut this off to use the S10 firewall. And I think if I get all this cut and unattached, 
I can probably just lift the motor straight out without even having to do anything back there. Cause I mean, I can, I think there's just one bolt on your rear transmission mount, undo that. And then if this is all gone, I'll just pull that out. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna end up including the footage or not, but uh, I actually turned this over with a starter. It was actually turning over fine. Um, seemed like it had good compression and whatnot. So I think that actually will run. I've, I've pulled these out of rivers before and they've ran, so probably still good. I don't wanna just chuck it just yet. I'll probably hold on to it for a uh, rainy day or something, but let's we'll start cutting all that shit out. should have everything undone they these have a u-joint set up it, these drive shafts slide into the transmission sometimes they're a real pain in the ass to get out so that might be fighting me but we're gonna find out we're gonna pick it up real quick i think i should be good but we'll see Uh, cool we got the big shit out now we got to start cutting this floor up so i got about 20 different body bolts i got to take out i can get to about 10 of them the other 10 i think i'm going to lift the body up and see if they just break when i lift the body up but for now i'm going to get to the ones i can actually get to everything should be unbolted I'm gonna probably pick the body up now. I should be good. We gotta go borrow my neighbor's hoist. He has a giant hoist I use on all my body swaps. Grab it right at the post, pull it up, and uh, hopefully when we pull it up, the uh, frame doesn't come with it, but we'll see. So we got the hoist. This is a giant A-frame hoist. My neighbor actually used it because he works on tractors and stuff. But anybody that's ever watched any of my older videos, I've had this for like 20 years now. <laughs> He just never needs it, so I always end up stealing it back and forth from him. But I've been doing these chassis swaps for a long time. It's always because I had access to this. Um, it's super hard to pick up a body without one of these. You can kind of do it with an engine hoist, but it's a real pain in the ass. So I'm happy to have this bad boy back. We're going to push this out, hook the chains around the post, and uh, pick up. And hopefully nothing's still attached, but we'll see real fast. I think I'm caught on the bumper brackets. They're not letting it come up. So I'm gonna try and cut those out real quick. Okay, got them cut. I completely forgot. The bumper brackets actually go through the body on the back of these. I actually knew that, but I just forgot about it, I guess, or maybe I was being lazy, but. Got those cut out. We should be good now. Let's find out real quick. Well, that's never happened. So that's interesting. Uh, the chain fell off. It probably did a bunch of damage, which is cool. But it's all right, and it's fun. We gotta try and fix it now, obviously, though. <clears throat> what I'm worried about when I lift it, I think it's gonna spin around and probably hit me. So I gotta make sure I turn the camera on. I make sure it's not on time-lapse too. That way, if I get hurt, at least we get some content out of it. news is nothing broke nothing's really bad at all this was already dented so i'm cool there the only thing i don't like is how badly balanced it is i don't really have anywhere else to put my chains either so we got to figure something out 
The only damage from the chain falling off was actually just a little bit of a dent in the rear quarter. Nothing that can't be fixed very easily. She's ready for a chassis. Actually, it's not even close to a chassis, I take that back. She's ready to get a bunch of shit cut out of her at the bottom, huh? I forgot the gas tank bolts to the uh, floor too, so I still got gas tank kind of hanging out back there. I think that's why the uh, weight is so far off. That and I already cut the firewall out, but cool, man. Finally got it in the shop, kind of like barely hanging on here. <laughs> it's not in great shape, but one of my bars that was holding it up slipped, but it's not going anywhere. It has a dolly underneath it. I'm gonna probably raise it back up get underneath it and then just cut all the floor out and then we'll get some measurements to see how wide we need to be i'll probably go ahead and cut the dash out even though i might try and use this dash in this build i'm not sure yet either way it's gonna have to come out because we're gonna have to kind of reconfigure some things okay so we're back on the blazer i got all my four link stuff all my airbag stuff it all came in i got a triangled four link i think i might have to tweak that to work around the stock gas tank but that's no big deal we can do it if we have to if you remember, this frame stuck out too far. We need to bob this frame like six inches. So I'm gonna probably do that before I start on the four link stuff, just to get it taken care of. Got the muffler out. Um, it seems clogged, it's way too heavy. Oh, wait. Oh, I thought it was blown out, but that's just a, that's meant there. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to cut that flange off and I'll end up making my own. This obviously wouldn't work with airbags anyway. Another thing I did, I went ahead and got my rear end mocked up where I want it. Six inches longer than stock. I did this. This, uh, this obviously isn't my final measurements or anything like that. It's just so I can get a rough idea of where it's going to be. And I, I knew this was going to be in the way, but I wanted to double check. So this, the old shock mounts and stuff are going to be in our way now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and cut our back brace move it up here i'm going to obviously do this first while this holds everything square and then once this is back here i can remove this because now that will be keeping everything square so we got to cut this guy and probably put it right there somewhere it was hitting the back of the tail pan on the 51 i'll go over here just in case people didn't see it before but when we put it up here for mock-up the back frame was back here and it was cause that to push out so it's got to be moved so we're gonna do all that right now a lot of cutting a lot of welding actually you know what i'm gonna do first i'm gonna take uh i'm gonna put my mask on and get all this old rusty dirty bullshit i actually power washed this and it's still on there so it's just i think he lived on a gravel road and the gravel dust has just grabbed everything so i'm gonna go in here and get some of this cleaned up in bare metal before i start cutting stuff so i can mark some stuff and it'll actually stay there <laughs> So let's do all that. Okay, it's time to mark this frame. I found just a piece of scrap metal, just about the length I want it. Maybe right there. It's nice when you have a plate because then you know, no, it doesn't matter how I cut this, it's gonna line up. I mean, you could technically cut this diagonally if you wanted to, because they're gonna butt back up together. But flat plate, you know, it's square, just like that. Let's cut these out. I'm gonna start with a grinder, but uh, if I have, if I need to, I have my plasma. Plasma will cut it easier, but it's not as clean. So we'll see how the grinder goes first. She shortened, got it welded. I couldn't get the bottom part welded because this is in the way. And now that now that I got bracing back here, we can go ahead and cut this out because I don't need it anymore. Now, originally I was going to try and run my plasma cutter where the, you know, like the pinch welds are or the spot welds. And then I just realized it's welded solid all around. So I'm just going to take the plasma and just 
cut out as much as I can to get it out. And then I'll probably have to go back in with a grinder and clean it up so it's not all shitty looking. But I'm just gonna, we're just gonna hack it out however we can, basically. It's not gonna be pretty, but it's gonna get out of there. And where is, there's the sections we took out. So now that this is bobbed, I know I'm not gonna have any issues with it hitting the back of the car. I only needed, I think, six inches. I took out, I think, eight or nine, just cause, you know, I'm already doing it. I might as well do as much as I can, but bada bing, she's all square and level. So this thing's being real stubborn and I can't get my plasma cutter up in certain angles. I think I clogged the tip of the plasma cutter with this undercoating on it too. So now it's, it's really mad, it's in timeout. We're going old school, baby. Stick welder turned up way too high. It will melt through about anything. I've, I've cut lots of frames this way whenever I didn't have a lot of good tools, so. <laughs> I'm in danger. Let's see what happens. This should do it, and I should be able to get down in there a lot easier. But let's make some sparks, baby. Got everything cut out, got everything smoothed up, got everything welded. I think I'm going to take it off the jack stands and put the frame on the axle and see how low it is. Cause I bought a C-notch. This is a C-notch kit. Gets the rear end way up there. And I don't know if I'm gonna have to do all that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just drop it and then see. Obviously I don't have to do the C-notch right now. I could do it later, but uh, I just wanna see where it's gonna be. So let's do that. That's pretty low. <laughs> I think that'll work. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have to see notch it. I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do these airbags. The kit I bought is bag on uh, axle, or I usually like to run the bags behind the axle, um, just cause you have more room back here. But in reality, there's nothing in the trunk of the car that would get in the way. So I can kind of do whatever I want back here. So I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do it. I might run them right there and then take these brackets here and have them tied into the frame like this and then have a big plate back here and then tie them in across the top. I might do that, that might work. This isn't by any means the cleanest look, but I'm not really caring about that on this build. We might uh, we might just leave the kit we got and figure it out. Okay, uh, next thing I need to do is get the axle stripped. I need to just take all the brake lines off. I was gonna try and bend them around, but it, it's they're just in the way. So I just need to take all that off, grind it all down to bare metal so we can start tack welding shit. Uh, also, I don't know if I made a video about this or not, but I got some dropped uh, torsion keys. These drop the front end three inches, and then you can also loosen up the torsion to get even more. So I should be able to get probably four inches of drop out of the front end. And that's that should be great, because that you, this looks so tall because of these giant fucking tires. These tires are like, three inches over stock so let's get let's get this axle out of here and get it all cleaned up oh let's do all that everything is stripped ready for welding i got my measurement on where the axle needs to be this is the 115 inch wheelbase that we have on the 51 chevy obviously this mark isn't perfect the cool thing with four links is everything is adjustable whenever i get all my brackets made and i get everything i have a good idea where it needs to be but if after i get everything welded in if something's off a quarter of an inch we can adjust that in the links which is cool but i got an idea where it needs to be i'm going to get the rear end up into there and get it measured side to side so it's not in there, you know, all to one side or the other. And uh, probably go ahead and tack the brackets in and start figuring out how we're gonna do our upper mounts.
So, sometimes whenever I'm doing these, I like to go ahead and assemble the bag so I can see how it's gonna work and where I wanna put it. I was originally gonna run a bar behind this, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this um, kick up I bought. This is like a $40 kick up. I'm gonna go ahead and use it because it's, it's pretty thick metal. And I'm just gonna run these to the side of the frame and then I'll just make sure everything's squared. And I'm gonna go ahead and decompress the bags as low as they'll go so I know everything will be bottomed out where it's at and then build up from there. And uh, probably throw a couple tacks on it there and then tack, whatever you call it, that side of the kick up tack that to the frame and then we'll build all around that kick up and then what i'll do whenever i get it all welded solid i'll pull the axle back out and i'll go ahead and cut the extra frame that's hanging down on the edge um, it's easier to kind of square everything up whenever it's it's kind of where it's supposed to be already if you just took this bottom bracket and put it where you thought it needed to go and then made sure it was level and then you realized it was an inch too far in or an inch too far out you're just gonna end up cutting it and redoing it all anyway all right let's get these compressed and uh maybe we'll shoot a tack on it if i can get it kind of leveled and where i want it my bag compressed i know whenever there's weight on this now this is exactly where everything will set i got everything dead level i got my pinion angle three degrees up which is perfect for my drive shaft angle. And I'm ready to go ahead and tack this one in place. And then I can go ahead and tack this. This is gonna be my new frame essentially. I can go ahead and tack this in place too. And then we'll go in here and we'll start building this so that it's completely boxed in. There's another piece here and then all the sides. Should be good. Everything is square. Everything is straight up and down. You gotta watch out sometimes your, your you know mounts can move on in your bag will go crooked it's not good on them so i'm ready to throw some tacks on this side and then we'll do it all on that side again So I went ahead and tacked this originally, and then this just had too much flex. So I went ahead and just built the frame rail. You can see what it looks like. And what I'll do whenever the axle's out of the way, I'll weld the bottom of that and then trim whatever hangs over. See how there's a little bit? There's even more on the other side. But that's how you build these. And then whenever this is completely welded, you can go in there and cut your stock frame out of the way, and then this will be your new frame rail. Or in my case, I might not even need to do that because I'm already basically as low as I'm going to be. So I might C-notch, you know, like baby C-notch the bottom. But in reality, I don't need the whole kick up. You know, my axle isn't going that way. I'm using this more for structure than anything. And then what I'll do whenever I get all this together, I'm going to run a bar. Maybe the front and the back, maybe just the back. But I'll run a bar across for both of them. And that'll even give it strength this way. But let me show you where the money shot is. Bada bing. Bada bing. That's how you do it, baby. So, now uh, we have to do all that on the other side. We got them in. Both of our little frame sections also. Bada bing, you love that. You love to see that. Went in there perfect. Really tied everything in very well. That's a big piece of metal. It's real thick too. So I don't need anything up front now. I mean, I might if I end up needing to for some reason, but that should be plenty. I mean, usually guys will run one on each tower, but this is like quarter inch tubing. Like it was just big. So it's definitely not gonna flex either way. And uh, looking really good. Everything's still level, everything's square. My wheelbase is perfect. Pretty excited. It's looking good i'm beat this has been a uh this has been a hell of a project so far i think i want to i i basically i want to get this sealed up more than anything i could just put a piece of tape over it but i want to watch it go up and down so i'm gonna go ahead and put these in because i don't like that it's open while i'm grinding and welding you can get shit inside the bag it's not great so let's uh let's put these fittings in
All right, we should have juice if I put air in it. Let's see what happens. Now, if you watch closely when it went up, it kind of did this. Well, that's because I don't have my links in yet. There's really nothing to hold it square. Whenever you get your four links in, that holds your axle from wanting to walk on you. I'm still super happy. Everything looks really good. Still super square. Look at that fucking level, baby. Let's watch it drop. That's the funnest part, obviously. gets old i mean check that out cool man airbags are the most fun i swear to god they are by far the most fun the links should be a little bit easier i just I'm, I'm gonna drain the tank get the tank up in there so i can figure out where my front links go from what i've seen a lot of guys will run like a dog leg link which basically like is over and then to one if that makes any sense instead of a triangle to get past the gas tank i know for a fact the the bumper is going to be on the ground i mean there's no way it can't <laughs> there's no way it can't be this airbag stuff was not cheap it wasn't as expensive as i thought it was going to be but uh it's not cheap i usually buy top of the line stuff well mid-tier stuff this one i went on the cheaper route to save money for the budget and it uh it was a little more affordable than i expected And just throw it right there where it lands right in place like this <laughs> airbags are easy man you just gotta throw some shit at some shit is to get the body mounted i kind of got it thrown up there but it nothing really lined up very well i'm hitting a bunch of stuff now granted my wheels are entirely too big but i still want to make clearance for them so I can basically run whatever wheel I want. The wheels I should be running are probably two to three inches smaller than those, but I still wanna just go ahead and make the clearance for everything while I'm cutting stuff out. Another problem I ran into was the front of the cowl is hitting the dash. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this top dash pad off. I mean, the, the foam on this thing is like two or three inches thick and I'm not gonna be using any of it anyway. So I'm gonna try and get some of that off there and see how that'll help us sit down. I think it'll work, but I don't know. But what I'm gonna do first is cut out all the spots that are rubbing on the actual 51 body. Then we'll come in here and start messing with that and hopefully throw it on there and get it close enough to where we can maybe start making some mounts and uh, get it on there permanently. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> Two hours later. The 51 is as cut as it needs to be. I can't really cut anything else. So wherever everything lands at this point, we're gonna have to just work with where it's at. I have cut my dash cut out as much as I can without getting into structure. Got my wheel wells cut out um, to accept a larger wheel. And you can see clearance now, that's actually my outside quarter panel. <laughs> so can't go any more than that without raising your quarter panels or getting crazy. So this will all be tied in to the frame of the car, either by a body mount or just welding it straight to it. I don't know. Sometimes I make these where you can't take them off just because it's easier. But now that we're done with that, we can start whittling away at this. I want to get the dash off and I'll get this foam off the top and see what I'm looking at. When it sits on the car, it looks like it's about right in here somewhere. So what I would like to do in a perfect world is get all this shit off here, maybe leave the stock Speedo and the stock, you know, AC stuff, and then graph the, where's it at? Uh-oh, there it is. I'd like to maybe graft the original dash back over the top of it. It's not always possible, but I'd like to try. Well, that's a little excessive. Probably didn't need to do all that. Let's throw the body back on and uh, maybe see if we can't kind of figure out how the front end's gonna go on this damn thing. Got her pretty close about where it's gonna sit. Still gotta kind of shimmy it a little bit. 
but I do want to throw a fender up here. I've taken a couple rough measurements and I think I'm okay. My biggest problem is a 51 Chevy comes in. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. Actually got one over here. <laughs> um, I got a video coming out on this 50 um, pretty soon. It's not necessarily the best example. Uh, the 52 might work too. So as you can see, these actually have a tape or two of them. Not only in the fender, but actually the body does a little bit too, but in the fender a bunch. So with the S10 just coming straight out, all the bullshit's gonna be up here. So what you end up having to do is trim your radiator sport, just trim all that as much as you can so you can get a fender on. Usually we have to relocate the batteries. See, this one's a 50 Chevy, which is basically the same front end. I mean, I've cut the shit out of this one's customized, but see how much that damn fender goes in? We'll see, I'm gonna throw it up there just to see where it's at in relation to the wheelbase and then we'll kind of start figuring out what we got to do i'd like to get the body where i want it and then throw a brace in it somewhere so it can kind of sit there on its own and i don't have to have it piggybacked on the hoist but as you can see this is what i'm worried about usually when i do these this just gets this is the definition of 10 pounds of shit in a two pound bag because everything gets in the way usually got to whittle these down to here and all that fun stuff but let's see how bad it looks first <laughs> So as you can see, I mean, it just fits absolutely perfectly. I mean, <laughs> fucking mint with the door gap. Um, I kind of wanted to throw it up there to see where my wheelbase was. It seems pretty close. The cool thing about these, you have a ton of real estate, it's free you real know, estate. To, to move these fenders if you have to. I mean, the, the actual wheel lip, the arch, you can move it. We just want to get our back where we want it. And then if I get this on there and it's off, you know, an inch or two, we'll just move her back if we have to. But we'll see. The main reason I threw this up here was for this. As you can see, we're catching there. It's not letting it bolt up. My cowl is too low. So we need to trim this. This probably as well. And then that won't let that sit down. So we might get lucky and be able to keep our battery there, but this core support definitely has to go out of the way. What I'll do now, is find a marker, get it marked. And then what we can do is we'll take measurements of these marks. Probably right there somewhere. Probably right there somewhere. Uh, I might just be able to hit that with a hammer. I don't know. Yeah, it should be fine. And then what we'll do, take this off. You want to gently place this on the ground. There you go. Very gently. Now what we're going to do is I'll take this measurement, cut, whatever you want to call it, and we'll do the same thing over here. We got our cuts sitting a lot better still not perfect and my wheelbase isn't the best right now looks good though i really like where it's at i was gonna go ahead and start making my mounts for the body but since i know where everything is it's not gonna be super hard to put everything back where it's at i'm gonna go ahead and just pull it so i can finish welding all of this rear airbag system up i could technically do it where it's at but boy it'd be a lot easier if that body wasn't in the way okay we got her back in here got the body back over there it is time to do a ton of welding what i want to do i'm going to take i got to take my links off because they have plastic bushings and the bushings will melt you know even if you're welding i don't know five inches away it can get hot enough to mess with that rubber bushing plastic bushing whatever it is Everything is welded. We ended up having four full hours in welding. Just throw it right there where it lands right in place like this. Check it out. It's actually sitting on the frame. Um, it's crooked and none of the mounts are done. They're just kind of sitting there. So I actually had it measured out perfect 
And then when I went to move the hoist, I ran it into it. <laughs> so it fell off. So I had to kind of throw it back up there, but I'm okay with that. Everything I can do in the shop to level it, you know, I'll, I'll put a jack underneath one side and we'll square it up in the shop, but I'm super happy it's actually on its chassis. Forgot to update the budget, uh, but we're adding it right now. Here's where we're at. A lot of airbag parts were bought, spent a ton of money. Uh, total spent so far, 2084. This is what I've sold. The blazer parts, the fastback frame and motor, and then just basically a little bit of scrap since I've sold those. I still have a lot of parts for that I can sell, especially if I start getting into the hole. Uh, I have a bunch of spare stuff for this 51 I can sell if I need to. But overall, our total is 1717.32. Not bad. I don't hate it. About half of the budget, we got 3,500. There's still so much that needs bought and done. Cool thing happened. Uh, my mic was broke on this camera and I, half of the footage where I was talking, it just did not work at all. The other half I should be able to use, but let me go ahead and update you because there's a good chance none of it's usable. What we did to start yesterday, I took the front clip off, took the hood off. Uh, there it is over there. Took the hood off, took the front clip off so that I could start on my turbo. I got a lot of the piping in, not all of it, but I got a lot of it in so we can start figuring stuff out. I looked at it, it was the other way around, but I looked at it to clock it and I was like, well, that's not gonna help me much, but I didn't even check on this side. This way it actually helps a lot. I should still have the video of this, but we did clock it and got it turned down. Stop being a bitch. So I still have kind of a funky bend, but it's not nearly as funky as it was. So I probably had at least 30 people telling me to clock the turbo. And then I had a bunch of other people saying, hey, dummy, you need to run the driver's side manifold because then that connects to your passenger and then you get all of the exhaust going through the turbo. Maybe I didn't uh, word it right. I completely understood that. I know that both exhausts have to go to the turbo. The problem is this kit, and I found this out since I posted the last video, this kit was actually for a two-wheel drive, like a Cyclone truck setup. Those were all two-wheel drive. So all this stuff in the front, I just don't have room for because it's four-wheel drive. I, there's no way. There's axles and all kinds of shit under there. So I can't run it that way. So what I said in the video was I said, my exhaust will just go back out there the way it's supposed to. And I think people thought I meant just only run it off the one side. No, no, I just mean I can go out the back because they, I think originally came into one and then went out. What they'll do now is I'll be able to just go up and then connect that to the other side of this pipe. Cause this actually does have some room to kick down. It can't go across though like the kit wants it to, but it can go down that way, I think. The only thing on this entire kit that was specific to this car was the fact that the manifold holes are the same. But other than that, it's just a bunch of universal bins, like nothing is supposed to be. One long angry line no down. Okay, so I got it jacked up so we can kind of figure out our exhaust situation over there. But for now, I'm going to work on my intake. I got my mass airflow sensor on, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I think I'm going to go down with it. Okay, I think we have our intake kind of figured out using some handy dandy masking tape because I don't have a coupler for this yet. It's all coming in the mail though, so it should be here soon, but I think I got this figured out. Maybe not. Ooh, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. This figured out. What's cool is I bought this. This was actually an accident. Um, it was a 2.5 inch to three inch. Whoops. 2.5 inch to three inch, I believe it was. And I actually needed a, just a three inch for this. But bonus points, this can go on there now and then feed to our tubing right there. 
something like that. I might need to stretch it a little bit. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see. I have, I have this size tubing if I have to stretch it a little bit, but I think I can pull it off right there. Right there. Got it all connected. Some more handy dandy masking tape. Got to get another coupler. The funny thing, like these silicone couplers are like $5. I mean, they're nothing, but having the right sizes and then like a size here that went up, you just, you never have all that in stock. This kit came with a bunch of like two and a half inch, I think it was, because that's what this is. But this is three and a half. This is two and a half. Like this is three, like certain things are three. The mass airflow sensors, three and a quarter. So you just, you know, gotta have funky. <laughs> Damn, it's working, baby. They didn't really come with the right way skate, naturally. Fucking universal eBay shit. Uh, but I think I'll have to bridge a wastegate in here somewhere, but I, I have plenty of room to do whatever. So intake side is done for now, baby. Okay, I got the exhaust cut and welded. I went ahead and turned it down. Now I have a V-band on it. Okay, we get to get creative because the outlet from the turbo is two and a half. The car only runs an inch and a inch and three quarters so we get to go two and a half down to two down to inch and three quarters i'm just going to make it three different pipes since i have so many different sizes if i hug this right against there it'll come and then there is the driver's side exhaust so i'm gonna have this come down run into this so now my driver's side will be connected i'll block that off and then now my new turbo is gonna come into that downspout and then out. I kind of love, it's a rat rod. I kind of love it when guys run their turbo exhaust like out the hood and shit, like that's super cool and I like it, but I don't really think this is the project for it. What I can do with my AC flange, if this goes out this way, my AC should be able to come back around this way. I might end up having to make custom lines for it, but I should still be able to use that, which would be nice. fly out and hit me in the face. Don't ever do that. Why am I doing this? I would never do this normally, but I'm doing it because the camera's on. I'm gonna pop that fucking tire is what I'm gonna do. Oh, I just said it. I just said it. Why would, why? I don't even know why I did that. Super excited because I think this downspout is gonna work, even though it's a four wheel drive and it was meant for a two wheel drive. I think we can kind of just snake some shit around there. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna have a couple tight bins, but it should be doable, so. Turbo exhaust is completely done. The intake side is also completely done, which is great. Uh, and yes, I was drinking red Kool-Aid. So, I don't know, I felt like telling you, I guess you can see it on camera. I figured I might as well say something. All right, back to the shit. Here is our exhaust side, goes down into, that is actually the stock exhaust, and that goes all the way out to about the rear tire. I will finish that out later. I was more worried about all this. Intake side goes here. Intake side comes out here. I have fittings here and here. I'm also gonna go ahead and put another V-band um, on this. I had it set up to where it had like an normal exhaust 
uh, clamp. I don't like that as much. I'm just going to put another V-band down there so I can just put that piece in, take that piece off if I ever need to take the turbo off. Let me turn the light on. There it is. Exhaust out from there. I definitely probably should have left it on the jack stands, but it actually goes out. You can see the bend. That is the driver's side. So now the passenger side is connected to the driver's side. It goes down around this way around to the driver's side. Oh my goodness. It fits about as bad as it could uh, with it still being on. I don't know why, but that's okay. It's actually gonna end up coming off again <laughs> whenever I have to fill in the floor. Screw it. Best thing about the planishing hammer is how quiet and soothing it is. I mean, I can just fall asleep working with this thing. This is Pinky, the most powerful drill in the world. Some of you may know or some of you don't. It has a dead battery right now, and it's still still better than any Milwaukee on the planet. Okay, we got these patches here done. That's still hot. Why did I do that? That was stupid. Aha! <clears throat> Sorry. We got these ones done. We got these ones formed, but they need trimmed. That's what those lines are. I will trim those so that it fits, you know, in the hole. Um, you don't want to do any overlapping or underlapping. It's not the end of the world. It's just not what I like to do. So I always try and butt them up there as best I can. We got one side lined up pretty good. We have no gaps. I got everything cut out. We can go ahead and tack this in place. Start on the other side. Okay, got the pieces made on the hood. Still needs a lot of welding and a lot of fitting. And I need to make a little cut there and file to get it to fit better, but the shape is perfect. I didn't grab shit. Oh, I ground on it. <laughs> Yeah, I might. <laughs> I might need to put a little tack weld there. It takes a little screw you can put in. Well, I never took a screw out. Oh, shit. They're God, ready. what is going on? They're really All right, hold on a minute. My hood fits absolutely horrible, <laughs> which I was kind of expecting. I technically pancaked the roof about two inches, if you look at it. See, it's not as bulbous, which I like. Um, I kind of like them when they're a little bit smoother like that. But when you do that, that obviously changes all your shape. They said this car definitely didn't need a turbo. You know, it's a cruiser, it's a low rider. And he's absolutely right, it definitely doesn't. Um, I just wanted to spice it up a little bit. Thought it would be fun. You know, we built the last truck in there for a thousand bucks and that was really, really challenging. This one at 3,500 was still very challenging, but I really wanted to try, you know, and and really, really challenge myself. Like I, I almost want it to be on the teeter where like, no, it's not gonna happen. Yes, it's gonna happen. I mean, even in my own mind, not just like for, <laughs> you know, the video to have tension. No, no, I really want to think I can't pull it off because I, that pulls the best out of me. And then I also learned stuff. To start on this rear floor, start on the rear brake lines, start on the rear fuel lines. My fuel lines were rusted and broke, so they needed redone anyway. My brake lines need lengthened because we stretched this frame eight inches or whatever it was. Also, we have airbags now, so we got to kind of tweak how our brakes work. Obviously, we need to have a 
a rubber line in there somewhere since it moves now. Bunch of stuff. But Check it out. I got all of the fuel line stuff done. Also had to make a new ground for, I still don't remember what the hell that thing's called, vacuum box something. All the vents are done, all the lines are done. Everything is good there. Um, I have, I'm gonna start with my brake lines now. Also, I got this hidden kind of over here in the door. It's kind of ugly, but you'll never see it because we're gonna have our bars of our floor go across there. All right, check out how fast this is. Operation one. have to switch it yeah i thought i had to switch it i don't have to switch it let me go to where's that operation two absolutely perfect flare focus you piece of junk Plenty of room. You can see where the, you know, like the back seat would still be here. So whenever we stretch the frame, we actually have gained some room. So I think that'll be a little bit easier to do. And we'll just probably run. I don't know what I'm gonna do for seats yet. I don't have any idea. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I just wanna get the floor part done and then we'll figure that out down the line. We are moving and shaking today. Uh, on this sheet metal work. I'm moving and shaking. I just about started dancing right then. Ooh, ooh, I will. Don't make me, don't make me post a dance video. Okay, so I got most of the floor structure done as far as all the framing and whatnot. It looks like a set of monkey bars right now, but it's actually exactly how I want it. I'm very excited. This piece here is gonna be removable. That way, if you ever need to mess with the gas tank or anything like that, you will. You won't have to take it out from the bottom. If you ever have to mess with the fuel pump or anything. Check it out, I'm about the uh, halfway point on the sheet metal. Not too bad, still uh, have some more welding to do and stuff. Check it out. Oh yeah, baby. Got her all buttoned up. Doesn't look half bad if I say so myself. I ended up screwing in. So these two panels here, my top one and my bottom one, those ones will always be able to be taken off. I just bolted them in. I went ahead and bolted in this one here and then this one up here for now. Um, that's why there's kind of a gap there for now, but I'll end up welding them in. I don't know, I might end up just leaving them bolted in. It's really nice when you can take all this off and get to that stuff. Okay, I got, I tried to weld this with my little aluminum welding rods. My torch is a piece of crap. It can't get this hot enough. I'm trying to use a little torch, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I just went ahead and used some uh, JB weld. That's fine. You're not gonna see it. I'm not super happy about it, but I can't mess with it anymore. I've wasted entirely too much time on a piece of shit coolant tank. So I can technically make this tube fit whatever I want, but what I like to do is, especially when there's stuff in the way on the other side, I like to drill it out where I know I have the best, like a straight shot. That way I don't have to like do any crazy tubing. So that's what I just drilled out. From in there, my easiest, and obviously you don't have to do a drill. This would be bad if I drilled it and ended up being over here, <laughs> but I knew this was gonna be in the you know, the region. When I drill that, I can come out here now and see, okay, this is where everything needs to go in. Um, it ended up being, this needs to be the lower end because my gas cap, I don't want that to run into my trim, obviously. So what I'm gonna do now is trim the hole to go up there. Check it out. It actually looks badass. <laughs> it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to.
Wait, I don't hate that at all. This is just a little piece of angle iron for the bracket. I uh, forgot to record it, so. We got the coolant tank mounted though, looks good too. Check it out. Got the filler neck all done. Went ahead and got my brakes all finished up. Got the fuel pump put in. Oh, everything's hooked up there. I know it's kind of dark in here, sorry. I got the wiring that went to the back. I got that all fed through there. All that's done, fuel pump's hooked up. I wanna make sure my fuel pump has power because I don't think I'm hearing power right now. I tried to put gas in it, but I only had like a gallon, so I don't even think it's registered. I'm not happy that I'm not hearing the fuel pump. Yeah. Oh no, it's in the back! Love hearing that fuel pump. It is in. I had to make a little bit of an adjustment. Either I measured wrong or he cut the drive shaft wrong. Probably me because he's been doing drive shafts for like 30 years. Uh, but it was, it went in, but it was too tight. It didn't seem like the yoke wanted to slide. And I was worried I was going to hit a bump and then break my transmission. So I had to cut about, I don't know, what's that, six inches? Okay, check it out. We got the exhaust cutout hooked up. I put a little mark on that circle for you. That is the rivet that goes to the flap. I put the mark on it so you can actually see what it's doing, but check it out. See it? Now she's open. The flap, I uh, the way I marked it is how the flap is. So, back to closed. Now you see it's closed, back to open. Sweet. Check it out. I'm barely touching the brake pedal right now. I don't have it all the way down. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Perfect. We got brakes. Oh yeah. I got the screw out. It should just pop. <laughs> there's already stuff falling. Look, there's already chunks of shit falling out. Okay. Don't see any leaks. That's good. I smell the oil on the manifold. That's what it is. Oh, should we? We should really should not do that. We're still testing stuff out. That would be very stupid. Oh, we built boost. Oh, did you hear the turbo?
This is gonna be a fun car. Primer is all sanded, and now I'm going to start laying out where my lace is going to be. I'm actually doing this backwards. I'm taping it off for the patina, and then this will be laced inside here. The reason I'm doing it that way is the patina I come up with, I use a bunch of different spray paints, and you don't want to ever try and use real paint on top of spray paint. Kind of reverse taping it off. I'm going to tape off the part that's going to be laced so that I can get my patina in there, and then whenever we untape it, We'll back tape it. We'll tape off the part that's painted at this point, and then we can do our lace in there. See how that rusty brown is starting to come through a little bit? Actually, let me do this. There you go, you can see that better. See that? Doesn't that kind of look like these spots? We just gotta do that everywhere. Time lapse! Time to untape it. It's been about, I don't know, six or eight hours since we painted it. We're gonna go ahead and get it untaped now. We ended up spending the entire day on this. I think we started at 9.30 or 10 and then got done at like four. <laughs> so I mean, we spent a hell of a long time. We could have got a little more crazy with it, but I'm really happy with how it came out. Absolutely perfect. Billy Benedict to you. All of my attention I've been giving to you. All right, ready for a satisfying video? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. It looks so good. I don't know what's showing up on camera and what's not. 
Smoking. I got a uh, manifold smoking. Ugh. All right, let's get some gas. First trip to the gas station is a success. Don't see any leaks just yet. I'm in people's way now. Sweet. Cool. First time on the highway. Always nerve wracking. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times you do this, it's always nerve wracking, especially when you need shocks, you bumpy bitch. Nobody's coming, let's go. Alright, let's see what happens. I brought your wheels back. They're just, they're still on my car. So oh. <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't know if the GoPro picked up me losing a hubcap, but that was hilarious. Funny story number two, told my wife I was gonna be gone 20 minutes. I was gone an hour and a half. She is gonna kick my ass. I really don't wanna go home, but I got to. But yeah, if this is the last video ever, I love you all and thanks for the support. It's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. ground and we have shocks i need to tweak them a little bit they're kind of janky i don't want to listen to that very badly they're kind of janky uh the way i got them mounted they're gonna be fine for now but i'll tweak them at some point in the future so that 450 helped a bunch we added it to the other stuff we've sold and scrapped and now our total sold is 817 dollars which is just awesome we did add a bunch of stuff to the paint. I had a bunch of people asking why didn't I add the paint and the pinstriping to the bot category. I just didn't have time, so we're doing it now. Paint materials was about 75 bucks. To be completely honest, I probably had more like $10 in it. We just have a lot of stuff laying around just from old paint jobs and stuff. But I don't like doing freebies. I don't like saying, oh, it was laying around, so it was free. So I always try and put a value on it. So went ahead and figured 75 bucks. Pinstriping was $100. That was discounted a lot. Uh, Von Mex pinstriping. He they, he basically did that for half price just for the clout, so I could kind of you know give him some shout outs, get his brand out there a little bit more. Lens for the parking lights. I have parking lights coming for my grill. Oh, tail lights were fifty four. Cardboard panel for the door panels was ninety two. Leather was thirty nine eighty nine. Spray glue, and then the seats were twenty bucks. The last video I went over those. I don't even think I'm going to use these. But they're technically in there now, but most likely I'm just going to get rid of those and get my 20 bucks back because I have a couple people that want them. But either way, we'll go ahead and add them now. 4120 is what we have spent. 817 is what we have sold for a grand total of 3303 So pretty good. Still have about $200 left. I do still have a lot of carpet to do and maybe the headliner. If it doesn't have a headliner in it, it's certainly not the end of the world. So only having 200 bucks left is not great, but it's a lot better than, you know, being over budget. So the bumperettes had to go, unfortunately. So, all right, let's start putting these door panels in. Just had 
a cop drive by, so we'll talk in a second. <laughs> oh, I need to pop the hood. Okay, no more filming bullshit. I got oil on my manifold. That's all it is, I think. Do you hear that? There's no way that's from me. <laughs> There's no way that's from me. I, I only did, I was only there for like two minutes. Oh my God. <gasps> Yo, they just stopped. Oh shit. Okay, we're gonna close the garage for a little bit. It is time to finish the 1951 Chevy. We are so close to finishing it. We just need to do some carpet. We need to do a little bit of body work, a little bit of paint in the rear and then do our door panels. And I mean, we are, mwah, we are finished, we are done. Check it out. Trunk is looking pretty damn good. I went ahead and shot black paint on whatever I couldn't get carpet on, basically those pillars. I'm pretty happy with how this came out considering I suck at doing interior. Looks pretty bitchin'. <laughs> Ooh, now I'm getting cocky because that looks really good. That I do not love as much, but it's all right. I mean, for now, I don't give a sh**. I am happy to have it sealed up. I got wiring and stuff running there that I didn't love. I was kind of worried it was going to get kicked or something, so it's all right for now. Let's not pretend that doesn't look hacky as shit. <laughs> but the good news is the headliner material is basically just pure foam. It has no, like, carpet to it like this does. So whatever you put over the top of it will actually work great. It'll just kind of work like an insulator below it. Got this done. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it did. I was really not happy with it last night, but I don't hate it. It's definitely not that big of a deal. One thing I do love, how this damn carpet came out. <laughs> I came back the next day and I was like, damn, that looks good. Check it out. Got the rear panels all carpeted. Looks pretty good. Super happy with it. I just added it up, very excited. I went through everything again just to double check stuff. It took me about an hour to get online and make sure everything I've bought. Bought 4258, sold 817 for a total of 3441.41. So we did it. <laughs> Well, I didn't really get enough video for it. What are those? <laughs> hey, 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 I'm an idiot. He said he was going to do it. I didn't think he meant today. God damn it. So he told me he was going to steal the wheels back. So I've made sure that this has stayed inside. And also I've been hiding the airbag remote so he can't jack it up to steal them, but I never thought about the wheels in the 54. Oh, that's upsetting. I, I, it was even my idea. I told him, I said, bring your truck down so we can get video for it and we'll see if people want to do the giveaway. 
Thank you guys very much for watching. This was a really, really fun car to build. Having airbags and a turbocharger is just overkill in the best way. <laughs> it's been a ton of fun to drive. I've had it out a half a dozen times. Every time I take it somewhere, it just kind of gets a crowd of people. Everybody wants to sit around and talk about it, see what's going on with it, which is great. The lace roof and the pinstriping really set it over the top. We just did that recently. If you're new to the channel, I own a hot rod shop. I'm always building something cool. I have two other builds lined up right now. We're doing a 65 Mustang, and we're also doing a 54 Chevy. It's kind of set up a little bit like this one. It's going to be a ton of fun. So if you like this one, please hit that subscribe button. Stick around for the other stuff I have going on. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, all that good stuff they do at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace. Love ya. Mama